Okay, in this video, we are going to do this crazy looking integral. Um, it's from JE Main 2022 online 26 July evening shift. We're looking for the integral of uh, the quantity one minus one over the square root of three times the quantity cosine of x minus sine of x all over the quantity one plus two over the square root of three sine of two x. So what I'm gonna do is, also it's multiple choice. If this wasn't multiple choice, I would have had 0% chance of ever getting this integral. Um, also, even as it is, there's no chance I would have finished this in time uh, for any sort of timed assessment or exam. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through what I did. I look forward, hopefully uh, some people will let me know a thousand ways I could have simplified this, but um, let's, let's see what we got. So, uh, I'm gonna copy over the integral and I'm gonna show you like each thing that I worked on as I worked on it and also kind of the background of how you would do it. Uh, so I'm gonna first deal with this cosine of x minus sine of x because I sort of recognize that. So I'm gonna take the cosine of x minus sine of x and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by one, a weird form of one. And my form of one is gonna be root two over root two. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to distribute the one over root two. So I'm gonna keep the root two from the numerator on the outside, go one over root two cosine of x minus one over root two sine of x. Now the reason I'm doing this is that I, when I see cosine minus sine, actually if I see like uh, with the same argument, so like cosine of two x minus sine of two x, whatever, I always think of the trig formulas. Um, in particular for this one, I'm thinking of sine of a minus b. So I know that the sine of a minus b is going to be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So if I can force it to work, cosine of x minus sine of x can be rewritten as just sine of an argument. And so that's kind of my goal. So um, in this case, uh, I have one over root two and one over root two. So I kind of have this unit circle ordered pair here, uh, one over root two, one over root two. And I know that that's the cosine of pi over four and the sine of pi over four. So um, I'm looking at it as sine of pi over four, cosine of B minus cosine of pi over four, sine of B, which means that um, A is pi over four and B is gonna be X in this scenario, which means I can rewrite this whole thing as just root two and then the sine of A minus B, so pi over four minus X. Okay, so that's that box. <laughs> so I've rewritten my integral I changed the thing in the yellow box into the thing written in yellow. And it's a little simpler. And that's basically how I'm gonna step through this. I'm gonna constantly be trying to make this thing a little bit simpler until the end. So uh, I'm gonna copy over that integral. And now uh, I'm gonna work on this part. There's not much to be done here. I'm just gonna factor two over root three out of everything in the denominator. So uh, we're gonna end up with this. I'm taking out the two over root three. And then that's gonna leave me with a root three over two and then plus sine of two X. Now, when I look at uh, the root three over two, I think I can work with that. But first, let's just take care of this two over root three situation. So like I'm, div I'm currently dividing by two over root three. So I might as well be multiplying by root three over two. So root three over two going into the numerator and then uh, everything else is the same. So I'm just gonna copy it over. All right, so. Uh, the numerator is looking a little weird now. Uh, it's a product of four things, and I would prefer it not be that. So I'm going to focus on this uh, and that. We got root 3 over 2, quantity 1 minus 1 over root 3 times root 2. Uh, the thing in parentheses there, I'm just going to get a common denominator. Obviously, you can simplify this a lot faster. I'm trying to show like all the steps that I did in case someone's watching. I don't know if anybody's going to watch this. This is like a tough integral. I enjoy working my way through tough integrals, which is why uh, recently I've been making videos like this. I hope some people are also enjoying them. And obviously, I, I mean, if you're the sort of person studying for this exam, you're gonna have to know these things. Um, so I get, uh, I've canceled the root three from the numerator with the root three in the denominator there. Um, and then also uh, root two over two is one over root two. I don't know. And then I decided I was gonna rationalize this this isn't like it's kind of getting me somewhere but like not not immediately um, but I now can replace that uh, the other thing is this root three over two I'm gonna choose to change this um, into the sine of pi over three 
it's not obvious that I should choose the sine of pi over three. I could have chosen uh, the cosine of pi over six. Uh, there's a lot of options there. I've gone with this one and ultimately it worked out for me largely because I really wanted to get sine of something plus sine of something else. Um, and you'll, we'll see why in, in a little bit, but that's what I wanted to do. So I chose sine of pi over three in this case. Um, so overall, we can rewrite this thing. Uh, so the blue box becomes this, and then uh, we just have this stuff still hanging around. Uh, and the denominator is gonna become the sine of pi over three, and then plus the sine of two x. So I'm thinking a lot about trig functions as I do this and formulas and the trig identities. That's that's where this problem really seems to live. Um, and then at the end, we'll do an integral. Like we haven't even touched the concept of an integral at this point. All right, I'm gonna copy this over. And now I'm gonna deal with uh, the denominator, right? So I have sine of something plus sine of something else. So you gotta think like, uh, what formula could I use to work on something that had sine of something plus sine of something else. Well, I'm gonna choose, or I'm thinking, uh, that I can use the sine of a plus b and the sine of a minus b. Now, if you're really hardcore studying for this exam, you almost certainly already have a formula memorized, but I know that my students would not have this memorized, so I'm gonna work through the logic of it. Uh, sine of a minus b is gonna be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. I'm always so impressed. Like, I hope that someone in the comments will show me like amazing ways that this could be done in like 30 seconds. I don't know. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add these formulas together. And so I get sine of A plus B plus sine of A minus B is equal to, so the cosine A sine B parts just cancel out. We just get two sine A cosine B. Now the question becomes like, what do I do with this? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let x be a plus b, and I'm gonna let y be a minus b. So I'm really deriving a formula that you should probably have memorized. Um, when you solve this system, I mean, if you just like add them together, you get x plus y is 2a. So that means that um, x, or rather, x plus y is 2a, so a is x plus y over two. If you go back and you just subtract them, you get x minus y is equal to 2b, so b is x minus y over two. So how does this help? Well, I can rewrite that formula that's like right above the sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b blah in terms of x and y. So I'm gonna do that. Sine of x plus sine of y is equal to two times the sine of, we said a was x plus y over two, and we said that b was x minus y over two. All right, so the whole point of doing this was we're trying to work on what's in that box. So the thing in the box is the sine of pi over three plus the sine of two x which means x is pi over three and y is um, two x. That's, that's what I'm doing, so I'm gonna get two times. Um, when you add them together, you get pi over three plus two x, but then you divide by two, you get pi over six plus x. And then when you subtract them, you get pi over three minus two x, um, but divided by two, so that's pi over six minus x, so cosine of pi over six minus x. Now, at this point, um, it's not like, I don't know that this is essential, but I decided to do that. I kind of hate, like I, in the, even in the numerator there where I have a uh, sine of pi over four minus x, I don't really like when I have minus x inside there. I'm gonna use the fact that cosine is even to just kind of like rewrite this thing. Um, so cosine is an even function, which means the cosine of pi over six minus x is the same as the cosine of x minus pi over six. I'm, I'm making that choice. So basically the thing in the box right now is uh, two sine of, uh, Whoop, hold on. Two sine of x plus pi over six cosine of x minus pi over six. All right, gonna replace it. There we go, and then everything in the box gets replaced. We're good. What next? Well, the two in the denominator, I guess, can go up to the numerator. Actually, I'm like, so the root six minus root two all over two could look kind of familiar to you if you've done a lot of stuff with trig formulas or if you just memorized uh, a ton of extra trig values, right? Not just the unit circle. If you go slightly beyond the unit circle, you might sort of recognize that numerator. So I'm gonna bring that two from the denominator up to the numerator as one half. And then everything else is the same. So we'll just keep it. I'm gonna distribute that. So uh, one half quantity blah over two is gonna become uh, blah over four. So here goes, we get root six minus root two all over four. And then uh, everything else is the same. Okay. 
can copy that over. So here goes. Now, I mentioned that I kind of recognize that. So I'm gonna work on this for a second. That I'm gonna turn into, so memorizing this would be easy, the, definitely the fastest way, but I'm gonna break this into two. I'm gonna look at it and be like, this is kind of unit circularly things uh, multiplied by each other. So uh, I'm gonna turn this into root three over two times root two over two minus one half times root two over two. And then I definitely recognize these. So this is, you know, the sine of pi over three, um, the cosine of pi over four, minus the cosine of pi over three and the sine of pi over four. So I do think a lot of people probably have this value memorized and didn't need to do this step, which is great. Honestly, I didn't have it memorized. I just like was aware that this is going to be something that I could get. So that's the sine of a minus b. So pi over three minus pi over four is pi over 12. I can replace the things in that colored box with the sine of pi over 12. So I'm going to do that and get this. All right, now where do we go from here? I see in the numerator. So it seems like it'd be silly to change the denominator again because I did all the work on the denominator already, so I'm not going to. But in the numerator, I have this. I have a sine times a sine. So I got to think like which, I've already used sine of a plus b and sine of a minus b. Um, and that has like sine, cosine, cosine, sine. That's not going to help here. But cosine of a minus b and cosine of a plus b have cosine, cosine, and sine, sine. Those can help me get a formula for this. So I'm going to start with uh, cosine of a minus b. These I'm just stacking in such a way that like I can easily subtract them and get the result that I want. Um, which is like, you know, I think about these formulas a lot. So that kind of occurs to me. And I've, I've done this before. Interestingly, I don't do it often enough to have these formulas memorized. Like I have, I have these formulas that I'm currently writing memorized. I don't have the formulas for like cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b memorized. Like just don't do it enough. All right, subtract. So we're going to get cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b. And then what you're left with is 2 sine a sine b because the cosine a cosine b cancel out. Okay, so if that's the case, um, what are we doing? Uh, I'm going to say that the sine of, well, you don't have to watch that. Sine of pi over 12, sine of pi over four minus x is going to equal one half, right? Because the formula we just derived has a two next to that. So it's going to be one half of uh, the cosine of pi over 12 minus the quantity pi over four minus x. And then uh, minus cosine of the quantity pi over 12 plus pi over four minus x. And then uh, we will simplify that. You don't have to watch that. We get this, we get this. Um, now cosine's even, and as I mentioned before, I do not like when there's a negative there, so I'm just gonna um, flip that around and make it the cosine of x minus pi over three instead of the cosine of pi over three minus x. So here goes, cosine's even, so we get, uh, you can see I literally just copy and paste and move them. So uh, the sine of pi over 12, sine of pi over four minus x, is equal to one half the quantity cosine of x minus pi over six minus cosine of x minus pi over three. Lots and lots of trig formulas. Let's replace the thing in the box with the thing that we just got. So our integral will now look like this. All right, we're taking that integral to the next page. Are we almost done? Kind of, I don't know, not really, but sort of. Um, all right, so we're here. Uh, now, what I wanna do for reasons that uh, maybe are kind of obvious, like if you start looking at the structure of this thing, like take out the one half, you have cosine of x minus pi over six. In the denominator, there's a cosine of x minus pi over six. So like if I start breaking this into two fractions, I can cancel those and I'll just have one over sine of x plus pi over six. So ideally, the cosine of x minus pi over three in the numerator, that's right here, Ideally, that's somehow just equal to the sine of x plus pi over 6. Like, that would be our perfect world scenario. So I'm going to try to see if that is the case. Um, so I'm going to take that over here. I'm going to use the co-function identity to change from uh, cosine to sine. So it's going to be equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus the quantity x minus pi over 3. All right, so now this is equal to the sine of 5 pi over 6 minus x. I'm about to do this in a sort of convoluted way, and then at the end of it, I realized I should have done it a different way. So 
bear with me. I'm going to use the um, difference formula for sine here. So I'm going to get sine of 5 pi over 6, sine of x, minus cosine of 5 pi over 6, and then sine of x. This is not the best way to do this, by the way. Um, but I'm committed, right? This is, this is the sunk cost fallacy. I put effort into doing this, so I wasn't going to erase it after I got to the end and was like, there was such a better way to do this. Um, so just using the values. So here we have 1 half cosine of x and then plus root 3 over 2 sine of x. And then I recognize this. Also, my goal was to show that this was the sine of x plus pi over 6. So that's like a big hint as to what's happening here. So 1 half is the sine of pi over 6. Root 3 over 2 is the cosine of pi over 6. So we can do this. Um, so this is uh, the sine of pi over 6 plus x, or we could say the sine of x plus pi over 6. Let me tell you, though, the better way to do this is to just use the identity that the sine of x is equal to the sine of pi minus x, and you could save yourself like all of the time I spent on that. Definitely remember that. Also, I'm going to use basically that identity in uh, a couple of minutes. So sine of x is equal to the sine of pi minus x. I should have used that from the get-go. Um, so I'm going to replace the thing in the box with sine of x plus pi over 6. Let's do that. So this gives us this. I'm also taking out the 1 half because it's a constant multiple. Now... I'm going to break the integrand into two fractions, right? We have subtraction in the numerator, break it into two fractions. Um, so it looks like this. And in the first fraction, we have cosine of x minus pi over 6 over cosine of x minus pi over 6. Reduce that, you have 1 over the sine of x plus pi over 6. 1 over sine is cosecant. So really, at this point, we have 1 half, the quantity. Uh, it'll be the integral of the cosecant of x plus pi over 6. Now for the second integral, uh, sine of pi over 6 over sine of pi over 6 cancels. You have 1 over cosine of x minus pi over 6. That's the secant because cosine is uh, 1 over cosine is equal to secant. So minus and then um, the secant of x minus pi over 6. All right, we are like almost done with this. You start to feel like you're getting somewhere, maybe. Um, let's go to the next. Let me just copy it over. Uh, I don't want to deal with secant for... <laughs> Various reasons. The main reason is that I know the integral of cosecant of x. Well, sort of. I know what I want to do with this. Um, so I'm going to change this secant into cosecant by using the cofunction identity. So this will be the cosecant of pi over 2 minus the quantity x minus pi over 6, which is the cosecant of 2 pi over 3 minus x, which makes me feel like I'm getting nowhere, especially because I kept looking back at the multiple choice options, and I was like, that's not anywhere. I'm going to use that identity, but last time we had it for sine, right? Sine of x is sine of pi minus x. I'm going to use cosine of x is the, co sorry, cosecant of x is the cosecant of pi minus x. So that means that the cosecant of 2 pi over 3 minus x is the cosecant of pi minus the quantity 2 pi over 3 minus x. And when you simplify that, you get the cosecant of x plus pi over 3. All right, so we've reached like the final form before we get down to like integrating. We have one half the quantity cosecant of integral of cosecant of x plus pi over six minus cosecant of the quantity x plus pi over three dx. This would be perfect if we knew what to do with this, which maybe you do. If you do, that's fantastic. If you don't, I'm going to show you how to get one form of the integral of cosecant of uh, u or w or x. So I'm going to find one different form of it. And it's not the form you're probably familiar with, right? You might know the integral or the antiderivative of cosecant of x is the negative natural log absolute value cosecant x plus cotan x plus c. Looking at the answer choices, that's not really going to help you here. Um, so here goes instead. The integral of cosecant of 2u, and we'll see why I'm starting with that, um, is going to be the integral of 1 over sine of 2u. Sine of 2u has a formula, right? That's a double angle formula. 1 over 2 sine u cosine u. I'm going to take out the 1 half. It's just in the way. Now, this is where, like, verifying trig identities, all those formulas that you know comes in handy. 1 is equal to uh, sine squared plus cosine squared. And so this we can do almost what we just did. Like, the 1 half is there. We can break this up into two different things. It's going to be um, sine over cosine du and then plus the integral of cosine over sine du. 
All right, and now both of these are, are pretty straightforward. You're gonna get um, one half, you get negative, but so if u is equal to, if w is equal to cosine of u, then dw is negative, so we need a negative. So negative natural log absolute value of cosine, and then plus natural log absolute value of sine. Okay, so um, this, when you have two natural logs and you're subtracting them, uh, that's equivalent to division within the natural log. So the thing with the plus in front of it goes in the numerator and with the minus goes in the denominator. So we're going to get one half natural log absolute value sine over cosine. But sine over cosine is tangent. So really what we have found is that this is true. So that is the integral of cosecant of 2u du is one half natural log absolute value of tan of u. Now we need to get this back to just cosecant of x, or I chose to go with w in this case. I don't really remember why I did that. Um, I'm going to say that I'm going to let w equal to u, which means that one half dw is going to be equal to du. And I'm going to do a substitution. So uh, we got cosecant of w. du is one half dw. So let's pull out the one half dw. And this should equal one half natural log absolute value of tangent of w over two, right? Because u is equal w is 2u, so u is w over 2. So we have that. And then just multiply both sides by 2. All right, so we have a formula now that we can use to integrate cosecant of w. I feel like you can see, like, cut out all my explanations. Uh, I wasn't working on this very long once I had worked everything out. I, in honesty, I worked on this for, like, an hour, probably. Um, but once you kind of, like, get the idea, this is why you practice for things. Once you get all the ideas down, uh, you can go through it much more quickly an, another time if you needed to. Um, so we're integrating this thing. We know this formula that we just worked out. Um, and so let's let's just do it. Let's apply the rule. So we're going to get one half. Uh, it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of the tangent of this thing divided by 2. So x over 2 and then plus pi over 6 over 2, so pi over 12. All right, and then uh, minus, same deal. It's going to be the natural log, the absolute value, the tangent of x over 2, and then pi over 3 over 2 is pi over 6. So x over 2 plus pi over 6, which means we're, like, done. Um, we're going to use the same rule. We have natural logs, and we are subtracting, which becomes division within the natural log. So we are getting 1 half natural log uh, absolute value. So the first thing is tangent of x over 2 plus pi over 12, and then all divided by uh, the tangent of x over 2 plus pi over 6. This was like a brutal integral. I would never have finished this on, on, a, uh, on a, a placement test. But uh, that's okay. I had a lot of fun doing it. So back, back to the original. Um, also, it's interesting in the answer choices. Instead of using natural log, they use log and then base e, like explicitly showing that. That's interesting. Um, so we would choose option A. I actually did this problem wrong like a thousand times uh, using a different form of the uh, antiderivative of cosine of 2u. I just like did the whole problem slightly differently. And I kept getting one fourth. And then uh, instead of one half, I got one fourth the natural log of the stuff that we got. Um, and then finally, it occurred to me that like I was just doing it slightly wrong. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how to rectify the two answers. I mean, they're, they're definitely not equivalent. One is half of the other. Um, but anyway, I finally got it. Uh, I had fun doing this. I hope people have ideas about ways that I could have done it better. Um, I don't know. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.